What's up guys, this is Crypto with James talking to you today about Orchid. Orchid is one of the most, well, was one of the most backed cryptos in the sort of previous bull cycle when it started, when it launched uh, on Coinbase. Um, it was getting a lot of hype on CoinMarketCap. You saw the VCs that were in it and there was a ton of hype around that as well. So I want to take a look at what Orchid can do in this next bull cycle. I also want to, you know, show the positives because... You know, some of the products that they've got are outstanding. One in particular, I'm really, I think is, I think it's brilliant. Um, also, there's some interesting news out of um, in the crypto space regarding wrapped Bitcoin and an FTX attempt to uh, to capitalize on it, uh, which I find very amusing. So I'll talk about that in this video as well. Before I get into it, though, guys, if you are new to the channel. These are the first 26 coins I spoke about on this channel. They're also the first 26 coins I owned when I made the channel. Had you put in just 100 bucks into each of these coins when I released the videos about them and you were still holding all those cryptos, never sold them, rode them into a recession, rode them into a bear cycle. If you sold them today, you'd be able to get 13 grand. So that's a 5x from the $2,600 investment and that's 13 grand profit. Um, which is not shabby at all. But if you just sold these coins in 2021 when the markets were just red hot and the bull cycle was in full flow, 100 bucks into each of those coins, a total of a $2,600 investment could have netted you a profit of 123 grand. Huge difference between doing the right and the wrong thing. Now, I, as I said, I sold all these off in 2021. They're not what I own. But if you want to see the coins I own, you can do. just have to go to copymycrypto.com. On the site, I share my entire portfolio. I let the members know in real time anytime I buy or sell any coin. Uh, we release videos every day talking about the market. So we've been absolutely bang on with the moves of Bitcoin. Like I've lost count of the amount of times we predicted the exact move of Bitcoin on a daily basis. Um, we also have tutorials that set up for the members. If you are brand new to crypto and you don't really know how to get started, these are exactly what you want. They show you how to get started on an exchange, how to begin your crypto journey. Um, they're the same ones I send friends and family. And then on top of that, guys, we've called massive winners on the site. Uh, none more so than Phantom. Phantom went up 677 times from when I released a course talking about explaining that it was the best investment of 2020. Um, had you put two grand into Phantom when I released that course and sold at the top, you would have netted 1.3 million. I will find another phantom and when I do, I'm not going to create a course. I'm simply going to go onto my site and I'm going to tell the members about the coin, the gains I think it can have and why, and the percentage of my money I'm putting in. And if they want to copy along, they can. If that sounds good to you, finding the next big winner without doing, you know, 150,000 hours of research, go read the site now and remember that everything you read, you can verify on this channel's history. Now, Orchid, currently nine and a half cents. Um, as we can see from the VCs that are in it, you know, you've got Polychain Capital, Blockchain Capital, Fabric Ventures Capital, Kinetic Capital, and A16Z, which is Andreessen and Horowitz. Um, and, you know, this went live on uh, a number of different exchanges. I think the first, the very first one, I believe, was Coinbase, or it was, uh, Coinbase was one of the very first. Yeah, Coinbase was one of the very first. Um, and, you know, there was a whole learn and earn thing on Coinbase for Orchid. Um, it's the native, to so Orchid, the OXT coin is the native token of Orchid, which is a cryptocurrency powered virtual private network, a VPN. Um, Orchid describes itself as the world's first incentivized peer-to-peer -peer privacy network. It aims to overcome uh, internet freedom limitations by using crypto payments to allow anyone to purchase bandwidth from any other uh, participating provider. It's done by using uh, something that they call probabilistic nano payments, which occur using OXT. Actually, probabilistic nano payments is something very similar to what Elon Musk has effectively suggested for Twitter in terms of a way to confirm a, an account is not a bot. Um, now, regular payments to uh, providers occur off-chain, allowing Orchid to avoid problems with congestion and gas fees, which is a nice way of doing things. The service is pay-per-use, meaning that 
users only have to contribute funds when they actually connect instead of sort of paying them monthly or annual fees like you would get with say NordVPN or something like that. Um, the co-founders are from uh, blockchain and financial spheres. You've got Dr. Stephen Waterhouse is the CEO, Jay Freeman, Brian J. Fox and Gustav Sim uh, Simonson who are all the co-founders. Waterhouse is a well-known figure within crypto. Uh, he also co-founded capital uh, outfit Pantera Capital. Freeman is the creator of Cydia, which is uh, an alternative Apple app store for jailbroken app devi uh, Apple devices, uh, which is currently used by around 30 million jailbroken Apple products. Fox is responsible for the creation of United States Bank Wells Fargo's first interactive online banking system in the mid-90s. And uh, Simonson is one of the Ethereum network's core security developers, helping with its original launch back in 2015. So according to official literature, Waterhouse became alerted to the need for internet privacy improvements after becoming the victim of a SIM swap attack and began researching VPN tech. So obviously the main premise is to enhance the v is utilizing blockchain tech to enhance the VPN experience. Using crypto-based probabilistic nanopayments, users can avoid uh, can benefit from anonymous VPN usage, which does not rely on a centralized server and the risks associated with the particular country's infrastructure. Um, a separate feature um, known as Orchid Credits allows users uh, to utilize fiat currency as well. In this instance, the OXT cannot be withdrawn and converted elsewhere, only spent within the, with network providers. This is designed to appeal to those who do not wish to uh, actually spend in crypto. The appeal of Orchid, however, is not just among crypto users. Developers highlight a growing trend for internet freedom in the face of mounting geopolitical tensions and local restrictions. And that's the reality. Like VPNs are absolutely blown up. We all get, you know, anyone that's an influencer online these days get emails from your Nord VPN or your, you know, any of them. Um, and, the, and the benefits of a VPN are so familiar. Most people that have used the VPN use the VPN so that they can watch or interact with content that is not readily available in their countries or, you know, trying to avoid the rule, the laws that are in place in particular countries regarding, you know, stuff like porn as an example. Um, so the VPN, the VPN client that Orchid has, has been up and running for a while now and is starting to look better and better. You know, their mission is privacy. Um, and they reiterate privacy as a human right, something that a lot of us tend to, to forget, which is why a lot, so many people allow governments to do what the hell they want to do without kicking up a fuss. Um, so orchidv.com's VPN, um, so you can unblock your internet. So the Orchid VPN enables a bandwidth marketplace. So buy, buyers use the Orchid app to get protection from snooping ISPs, unblock websites cut off by firewalls and for many other privacy benefits. Sellers receive payments in real time as they provide service and stake OXT to compete for service requests. So the benefit as well is that because these providers want to be seen, they, use, they stake the OXT um, token so that they are higher up in the rankings in terms of um, the services that they can provide. And if they're higher up in the rankings, they're more likely to be seen and then they're more likely to earn money. So there's a nice sort of rolling feature where it utilizes the staking mechanisms to secure the network whilst also enabling the service providers to earn by staking more. Um, so it's crypto powered, but you don't have to simply use crypto. It's a nano payment ecosystem. Um, and the beauty as well is it's a multi-hop system. So you can compose your own onion-rooted VPN circuit by stringing together multi, multiple hops for increased privacy. So you can dash from effectively node to node around the world. Um, and if you're unfamiliar with the onion router, the onion router was the, you know, one of the most secure uh, networks around. I think, it, I mean, Jesus Christ, I'm trying to think when I was using the onion router. I don't know, so long ago. I think it was about 15 or 16. So it's a long time ago. Um, so yeah, 
So the fact that they've in, they're utilizing the onion routed network combined with the crypto nano payments combined with a service that is really readily needed is awesome. Uh, the question really is, is the, how many people are going to use it? Now, for me, I think this is going to be an absolute beast in the space because I think fundamentally there is a, an enormous, enormous need, um, an enormous clamoring even for, for um, VPNs. Everywhere you go on YouTube, probably you've seen one of your favorite YouTubers promoting a VPN network. Um, and Orchid have a solution that is arguably far better, far more cost efficient, um, and open to everyone because you don't have to use crypto, but the majority of people that do use it do use crypto. Um, so as Orchid is more is more readily being used for payments and everything else. I'm expecting that we're going to see a fairly significant surge when we have a sort of swing once again in terms of a clamoring for privacy. Because in every crypto market cycle, we end up seeing these sort of trends, whether it's an NFT, whether it's DeFi, or whether it's right, you know, over the past few months, it's been AI. I think there'll be a, an inevitable sort of privacy folk centric um, privacy centric trend in the coming year or so um, whether or not that's around privacy coins which is a very different thing from what Orchid is um, we'll see but Orchid would profit from that massively um, now Orchid night is at nine and a half cents um, I honestly think this can hit a dollar with relative ease in fact if we just go back and see its uh, price points. I want to say 70 cents, was it around 70 cents was it all time around? 80 cents, was it? Yeah, so 85 cents. Um, but the upside to Orchid as well is, is you know, technically an uptrend long term. You know, launched in 2019 to run up 65 cents. It's, no, it's all time high in 2021 was bigger, around 85 cents. It's a solid, consistent uptrend. Uh, if it's a dollar, its market cap would be 690 million, which is not massive. Um, but the key thing for Orchid for me, I, what I'd like to see is what's the current user base, let's say on a monthly basis, and then show that there's a trend, there's an uptrend month on month. If, if Orchid can demonstrate that information, that's showing really positive signs that there's going to be significant price appreciation long term because if it's growing month on month on month, it means the user base is growing. It means the people that are buying Orchid token will be growing month on month. It means that long term, month on month, it's got to have an uptrend. I think that data would be really beneficial for not only for, well, for investors, but it would also be beneficial for Orchid in accurately promote it and like successfully promoting and marketing the Orchid VPN because if you're showing that more and more people are using it there's a reason why so more people are going to come and use it because oh loads of people are coming and using it it's like it's just psychology it's market psychology so if they start doing that um, and we do have a sort of wave of uh, excitement around privacy which I think is probably inevitable even if I worry about privacy coins long term because of governments. Um, Orchid can do a solid run. A new all time high should be able to be hit. Uh, and a dollar would sort of be where I'd be looking at. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Do you use Orchid? If you do, do you love it? Do you hate it? Uh, if you've used other VPNs, can you do a comparison? Tell me what's the difference. What do you think? Uh, and if you're a returning viewer, hit the subscribe button. Uh, these videos will make you money and they will save you money when I'm talking about crap coins, so don't miss them. Um, and before I get into the uh, wrapped Bitcoin news, um, if you guys want to see the coins I own, go to copymycrypto.com. On the site, I share my portfolio. I let the members know in real time anytime I buy or sell any coin. Videos are released every day talking about the markets. The pinpoint accuracy we've had on the markets for months now has been staggering. We've called the exact move of Bitcoin so many times we've lost count. Then on top of that, guys, we have got 
tutorial set up for beginners. If you are a crypto beginner, this is exactly what you need to get started. It will show you where to begin your journey. It will show you how to begin your journey. Um, they're the same videos that I send to my friends that are starting off in crypto. Then on top of that, guys, we call massive winners on the site. We call Phantom. Phantom went up 677 times from when I found it. Go back to 2020, look through your favorite crypto YouTubers, type in Phantom, see when they spoke about it, see what they said. Because no one was saying 100x. Barely anyone was even talking about it in 2020. And when I find the next Phantom, I'm not gonna create another course. I'm just gonna go onto my site and break the coin down for the members. What are the, what's the name, what's the gains? Why are the gains there? What percentage of my money am I putting in? And if they want to copy, they can. If that sounds good to you, finding the next big winner without doing 5, 10, 15,000 hours of research, go read the site now and remember that everything you read, you can verify on this channel's history. And last thing, ha, ha, FTX, you tossers. So wrapped Bitcoin supply dropped to negative after 11,500 Bitcoin was burned that was linked to Celsius. So this is an interesting story because it's about not only Celsius, but FTX. So there was a total of 11,500 wrapped Bitcoin linked to now bankrupt crypto lender Celsius that was burned, turning its growth rate negative. The current total supply of the wrapped to uh, token is 164,396 with a monthly growth rate of minus 7%. So wrapped Bitcoin, if you're unfamiliar, is just a mirrored uh, value of Bitcoin on the Ethereum blockchain. It's developed by BitGo in tandem with uh, Ren. Uh, and basically when merchants ex want to exchange Bitcoin for wrapped Bitcoin, they start a burn transaction and alert the custodians. The merchant transfers real Bitcoin to a custodian address on the Bitcoin blockchain, which is then locked. Once it receives the real Bitcoin, the custodian address mints the equivalent amount in wrapped Bitcoin on Ethereum. So being in an ERC-20 makes the transfer of wrapped Bitcoin faster than normal Bitcoin. But the key advantage of uh, wrapped Bitcoin is its integration into the world of Ethereum wallets, dApps, and smart contracts. Now, during the peak of the bull run, um, wrapped tokens became massively popular. Wrapped Bitcoin supply peaked at 285,000 when the price was trading above 48 grand. However, obviously the, big, the bear market came in and then we had so many crypto contagion events. We had, you know, the Terra collapse, then we had the Celsius situation, then FTX. Um, so when uh, the Terra collapse happened, several crypto lenders uh, attempted and, and did successfully redeem their wrapped Bitcoin. According to one report, Celsius Network redeemed about 9,000 wrapped Bitcoin uh, amid a growing withdrawal demand. And a similar scenario occurred in November in this past year after the FTX collapse, where Reports indicate that um, FTX were trying to redeem 3,000 wrapped Bitcoin just before filing for bankruptcy. So they were trying to get their wrapped Bitcoin to sell it and move that money out of the accounts before filing for bankruptcy. Why? Because the dirty, dirty bastards. And the F after the FTX clap, uh, wrapped Bitcoin experienced its largest monthly coin redemption with over 28,000 being redeemed. Now, it turns out that BitGo refused to honor the 3,000 wrapped Bitcoin to Bitcoin and the tokens were burned anyway. Now, I love that. I love that. I love that BitGo went, no, you're screwing people over. You've screwed the markets over. We're not giving you the 3,000 Bitcoin. Quality. Quality really made me smile reading this. Um, and the market contagion caused by the FTX collapse also did in depeg the wrapped Bitcoin from the original value of Bitcoin. Although the slippage was about one and a half percent, it raised serious concerns about whether synthetic tokens were a viable mode of value transfer. Now, I long term think that synthetic tokens will work and they'll work very well. I think there is an inevitability around synthetic tokens where we're going to see. Um, a real growth within synthetic tokens based on the stock market because I just think from a financial perspective you know your New York Stock Exchange and all these other places are leaving money on the table 
they have specific trading hours. But if you've got a ton of synthetic stocks on the blockchain, all of a sudden, the trading hours for the traditional finance markets are 24 hours. And then there's money to be made. And if, if the New York Stock Exchange, as an example, when, yes, we will permit synthetic uh, stocks of, you know, these these tokens or the, these stocks that are on the stock exchange and they obviously can get uh, corroborated permission from the companies, then they could take a base fee for every transaction that occurs on the blockchain. That would be huge amounts of money that they could bring in. It would actually revitalize the stock market in, in a really positive way. Um, and it would and it would make stocks stock investing more accessible to your average retail investor um, but we'll see I don't know that was just me more having a, th a thought that I was speaking out loud um, either way funny to see that FTX got uh, mugged off with 3,000 wrapped Bitcoin I'm glad to see that I hate them <laughs> I think their behaviour was abhorrent and I don't think any of them will go to prison. I still don't. And I think the fallout will continue for the FTX thing. But out of curiosity, does anyone find it funny or amusing or angering that the FTX were trying to basically get hold, trying to redeem a ton of Bitcoin before filing for bankruptcy? Or is it just what you would expect from the fraudulent gits? Let me know in the comments down below. Uh, and that is it for me, guys. Take it easy. Bye-bye.